Hello and uh, welcome to this video. My name is Lars Haukeland and uh, I'm sitting here in my study in the basement of my house at, uh, outside of Bergen on the west coast of Norway. And uh, what I'm going to do today, as uh, I'm hoping you might have seen some of my other videos, uh, I'm going to do it a bit different this time because normally when I record a, a video I have my notes and I have the Bible on my side but uh, this time I'm using a PowerPoint presentation that I've used when I've gone to the UK used it there a few times so there are some things that I will skip because uh, when you're there in person you kind of I uh, want to explain who you are and uh, where you're coming from and show some pictures of uh, this and that. And uh, on this video, I will not be doing that. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, but I will be uh, looking at the uh, topic of confusion. And what I'll do is I'll use my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, as you see, it's shining a bit in my face there. And uh, I'll be going through that. Uh, looking at confusion, uh, angling it from my point of view, which is a uh, someone who works at a uh, psychiatric hospital. I've been working there for over 12 years now. It's uh, almost 12 and a half years. <clears throat> and uh, confusion is something that uh, is uh, very common in these days. Uh, it's so easy to get confused. There is so much information out there. There is, uh, there are so many impressions, so much, so many statements from here and there, and it's sometimes hard to know what is what is true, what is false, what is right, what is important, uh, who's right, because people say opposite things, and you can't trust the news anymore you can't trust what's on the internet you can't trust the this and that so much false information and uh, i will uh, talk about confusion uh, as they say within politics if you're not confused then you're misinformed but uh, i work at a psychiatric hospital here in bergen norway and uh, when i work there i um I see a lot of people that are confused and uh, sometimes this, these are serious types of confusion. And also uh, on the ward we do have a bit of violence and because of that we have something called a violence score that we write every time we write a report on a patient that we uh, have under our care. We always include this uh, uh, BVC score as it's called and it's got uh, six things that you can list on this score <clears throat> and I'll, I'll like to mention them to you just to uh, let you know a little bit uh, how it is where I'm working. Now the first point is confusion and that's why when uh, there's a new patient coming to our ward uh, we normally ask um, well the name of course uh, it's a good thing if you know your own name uh, and but we ask uh, do you know what date it is today do you know where you are I mean, do you know why you are here there are many things that uh, we can be confused about and sometimes we, we live inside a bubble and we don't know exactly what's going on on the outside uh, so Many people are confused to that point that they think that uh, uh, staff and other people are out to to injure them, to kill them. Uh, they believe there are cameras and uh, microphones everywhere and uh, this is something that uh, many patients uh, suffer from. It's a kind of paranoia, paranoid delusions. But um, when you are so afraid that you fear for your own life, then that confusion can result in violence. You know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's happening to you. And you, you're very afraid. And then sometimes you, you attack because you're afraid. So that is uh, 
the first thing we look for on our violence uh, score. Then we look for irritability and uh, this is of course when people are being irritable and uh, you can be irritable for many reasons and uh, you know it's uh, okay to be irritable in, in some cases but uh, you know irritability can sometimes lead to violence you're irritable about something uh, and uh, you could go the next step that could be violence so these are this is a score then that is supposed to foresee violence um, the third thing that we look for is uh, something, uh, it's uh, kind of like a, a difficult word, it's called boisterous. It's kind of like when you, when you throw your weight around and you come there and you kind of like uh, push your way through and uh, we, we have that, p patients that break out of their rooms and just uh, make their way. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, of course, things can easily escalate from being boisterous to being violent. And uh, this is also a, a danger moment, uh, a, 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 a danger that we, we look for uh, with the patients. Then we have uh, verbal threats. Now, if, uh, if you work at a psychiatric uh, hospital uh, where I am in a ward for special, specialized psychosis, uh, you have uh, many people, many patients that say they're going to kill you, uh, they're going to kill your family, and sometimes they're very descriptive about how they're going to do this. Now, of course, we understand that these people are ill, and uh, they are not their normal selves, um, but uh, verbal threats is something that can, of course, escalate and there are many kinds of verbal threats and I won't go into them all and some are almost like cleverly disguised but then we have uh, the fifth thing we look for is uh, physical threats That's, this is when you come with your fists up you really come close up to somebody's face <clears throat> and uh, you kind of sometimes they, they, they hit out in just in the air and uh, there are different physical threats, threats that uh, patients can uh, can do. Then uh, the last sixth item on our list is uh, attacking objects. And this could be that they're kicking the door, hitting the wall, uh, kicking flower, flower plants around, um, breaking things. And also, uh, as far as uh, the staff is concerned, we're also considered objects. And uh, if they attack one of the staff, this is also being said as attacking uh, objects. So all these things is, uh, these are things that we look for uh, with the patients and that we have to score them on every day, uh, several times a day, uh, just to know where and how a patient is doing so uh, where they are on this uh, on this scale so <clears throat> confusion is uh, kind of like the basis of uh, a lot of these things that we see <clears throat> and confusion is a real problem today and uh, when we see confusion in in our lives here or there then it's important to remember that this is not of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all churches of the saints. So if you experience uh, confusion in your life, you cannot blame God. God is the one that is not the author of confusion, he is the one that has the truth. Actually, he determines what the truth is. He decides what the truth is because he is the creator. And uh, if you are confused, then you need to come into the word of God. You need to come, come close to God and uh, be as close to him as possible. And uh, 
he will hopefully take away your confusion. So that God is not the author of confusion. Uh, God does not want us to be confused. He wants, uh, he wants us to know his truth, his holy word. So this is very important. The very first time the word uh, confusion is used in the Bible is actually in Genesis chapter 11, verse 9. It says there, therefore, in the name of it, therefore is the name of it called Babel, and that word Babel means confusion, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So this is going back to the Tower of Babel, or Babel, or Babel, whatever you say, but uh, the, it's the word where babbling comes from. You know, you just babble, you're not making sense. It's just confusion, all of it. And that's, this is what the what the word means. It means confusion. Babel is confusion. And of course, God came down and he confused the languages. And I so understand and relate to this about uh, confusion about other languages. Now, I'm a Norwegian. I speak Norwegian and I speak English uh, with my family. Uh, I uh, know a bit of German. I can uh, understand and uh, possibly speak uh, the um, Scandinavian, most of the Scandinavian languages. Uh, I'm terrible at French, but I, I know a few words. But, uh, you know, there are there are so many languages where uh, if somebody spoke to me in Arabic, for instance, I, I would not understand anything. It would just be confusion for me. And I'm looking forward to that day when we go to heaven, because then we'll all have the same language. We'll all be able to understand each other. Then we'll all be speaking Norwegian or English or Greek or Hebrew. Actually, I have a theory about that, but that's not the topic for today. So I'll come back to that maybe in another video if I talk about that particular topic then. Now, I would like to read a couple of verses about you where we see confusion mentioned. And confusion is often mentioned in connection to sin. Leviticus 18.23 says, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Now here it's talking about sexual sins. And it says that people that do this, they are confused. They're doing confusion. They're confusing how things ought to be with something that is not supposed to be. So in this place and in this part of scripture, it says that uh, confusion is sin. We are confused as people, so we do confusing things and we do sin and uh, we are showing that we are confused when we sin. In James chapter 3, verse 16 and 70, James writes, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion, and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So, it's not just in the Old Testament that confusion is said to be sin, but also in the New Testament. Where there is envying and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. Confusion is put together with every evil work. And this is important to, to realize. So, uh, what we have to do is that we have to uh, use our nuggets in the right possible way. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 are some verses that I have mentioned so many times when I preach, so many times when I do an introductory comment uh, in the church, uh, so many times when I talk to people, and it is so good. Let me read verse 1 first. 
I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So this is what we're supposed to do. If we're born again, we are supposed to present ourselves, present your bodies, our physical bodies. We give everything we have, we present it as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice to God. And verse number two says how exactly we are supposed to be able to do it. Because sometimes we say, I know what I have to do, but I don't know how. Well, verse number two gives us the way. Be not conformed to this world, but, and listen to this. If you haven't underlined this in your Bible, please go and do so straight away. Maybe put the video on pause and go and underline this in your Bible, because this is so important. Romans 12, 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be transformed. We need to be changed by renewing our minds. We need to put away the old us and go and become a new creature. When when we became Christians, our old Christian bodies died, okay? Uh, that was the end of the old man. And we started, we were born again for a new life. And we rose up as spiritual beings uh, now of course spiritually speaking we are you know we're a child of the devil or we're a child of god but you know our, our spiritual lives really start at that moment when we receive jesus as our savior and then we need to renew our mind and the, what, the, what we do is we we replace our old friends our old parties our old drinking our old um, discoing um, everything that we did before that is uh, sinful we we put that away and instead of that we get new friends christian friends that will help us and lift us up and build us up we get new activities we go to church we go to um special arrangements and activities that the church provides maybe we go and meet people from other churches and we get new activities and new friends that will be a help for us and we renew our minds we renew our lives really we build up our lives anew and we start being someone else now the world is concerned about the question of uh, the meaning of life and when they talk about the meaning of life, they got uh, basically four questions they ask. They say, who am I? Where do I come from? Why am I here? And where do I go when I die? These are the most common questions that people ask themselves. Now, if you are a Christian, you don't have to be confused about this. Who am I? I am a special creation of God. God has made you. You know, where, where do I come from? God made me. He formed me in my mother's body. And I grew up to be a man or a woman. Uh, why am I here? Well, as Christians, we are here to honor God, to give glory to God, to do whatever purpose God has decided for us to do in our lives, to use the gifts and abilities the talents that god has given us we are here to use these for him and try to uh, witness to other people try to work with other people try to build up other people uh, and um, your job and your uh, purpose might be different from mine but we all have to honor god and lift him up in our lives where do i go when i die well if you're born again you're going to heaven and you're going to see jesus face to face now that's wonderful and something that every christian is longing for if you're not longing for it then i have 
serious concerns for you. If your highest wish is not to be with Jesus, then uh, I, I do fear for you. But the Bible says that if we believe God, we will go to heaven. Uh, Jesus will uh, take us away from here and uh, he'll make a new heaven and a new earth. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ and don't accept him as your saviour, it says that you will be separated from him and you'll be cast into a place that the Bible calls hell. And they, in the Bible describes this place as a, as a place that burns with fire and brimstone. I know it sounds serious, so it sounds terrible, but that is what the Bible says. But what we need to do, we need to focus on God. This is what I say. I've been, I've been writing in Norwegian. I've been writing these devotional series uh, about fear, about anxiety, about having peace in your life, about uh, getting over sorrow and loss, and all these things that I've been writing about. You know, the fo the, the the solution to everything is to focus on God. Now, Jesus said in John chapter 6, uh, sorry, chapter 14, verse 6, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way to heaven, okay? Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And if you listen to Jesus, you will know the truth. So believe in Jesus and you'll know the truth. And he is the life. Now, I try sometimes to explain to people that are not saved what it is like to, to be happy, to have the peace of God, the joy of God in your life. And it's um, impossible to explain it. It's, it's like having a chocolate and showing it you and say that this tastes lovely and i can explain how that chocolate was made i can explain how the ingredients there in it how it was formed and uh, you know i can say how wonderful it tastes but you're not going to experience it yourself till you actually take a bite of that chocolate and you won't know the life that jesus has you won't know what a joy it is to have uh, live a life with the Lord before you actually are there and do it. So to know how it is to be a Christian and to live with God, you need to actually do it. It's just impossible to explain. And it's easy to get saved. Romans 10, 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you have to confess. You have to believe. This is what it says in Romans 10, 8. 10, 9. Now there are many other uh, verses that we could uh, could do here, but uh, basically you have to believe and you have to come as a sinner. You need to leave your sins behind you. You have to regret your sins. If you're not sorry for, for your sins, then you know better than the devil. The devil, he, he knows that God exists. Uh, he knows that uh, God is in control. He knows that God has the truth, but he cannot be saved. You've got to be uh, sorry, you've got to regret, you've got to confess uh, what you have done. You need to confess with your mouth, not only your sins, but confess that uh, Jesus is Lord of your life. And if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus up from the grave and that Jesus is alive today, you will be saved. Um. In Acts chapter 19, verse 32, we read, Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. 
Now, this is a very sad verse. It says that the people that came together to worship God was confused. And uh, the way that we become confused is when we, we try to follow our own opinions instead of what God says. Now, many people say it's hard to believe uh, everything and it's hard to follow God. But, you know, it's, um, it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the Bible says. Uh, some people say it's hard to understand the Bible, hard to understand what it says. You know, there are some places in the Bible, like for instance, the book of Revelation, lots of pictures, images, and uh, and these kind of things. And, and it means different things. And you need some proper education and... Uh, and uh, you need to be a mature Christian before you can start uh, understanding uh, complicated things like it says in Revolu uh, Revelation when it gives all these images. But most of the Bible is not hard to understand. Most of the Bible is just hard to accept, hard to believe in. And God is asking you, do you believe? Remember what I said about 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. God is not the author of confusion. And we get confused and the thoughts go here and there and everywhere. But, you know, just go to the Bible. Go to the, the Word, the Holy Word of God. And He will educate you. If you are a Christian, you have this Holy Spirit living inside you. He will help you understand what the Bible says. And when you have the Holy Spirit to help you, you should not have to be confused. If you sometimes get stuck, try to ask someone that you, maybe someone you look up to. Maybe you have a pastor that you trust. Maybe you have a good Christian, a mature Christian that has been a Christian for many years. Ask him or her get some help because you shouldn't have to be confused that is not god's will for you so just go to god go to god be honest and say to him if you're confused and he will help you i pray that he will send someone to you so you don't have to be confused anymore I'm hoping that if you look at some of my videos, which is on revlarsvideos.wordpress.com, if you go in here, you find my uh, my English videos, uh, because uh, most of my videos are in Norwegian, and also, of course, you can find them on YouTube. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do something in my videos to be able to bring clarity to to some of you who, who watch these videos. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I hope that uh, God will be with you. And uh, I'll uh, be recording another video next week. God be with you.